Hi, welcome to Seaside Quilting Tutorials. My name is Terry, and today we are working on our 2023 Seaside Quilt Along Block 2. Really excited about this quilt. Block 1 came out really beautiful. I'm loving the colors that I'm working with. But whether you're picking out spring colors or um, matching a room with your colors or even doing a Halloween, a fall, or a Christmas ahead of time, it's a great time. I know that we just got past Christmas and a lot of people don't want to even think about fall and Christmas because uh, spring is coming. But it is a great time to be working on Christmas projects that we're going to be giving away and take a little time. And this quilt really, uh, if you were to be doing it uh, block for block for block, it really wouldn't take very long to make it. So last year we had done the one that was a block a month and I found that a lot of people, including myself, uh, was very anxious to see the next blocks. So this time we're distributing them one per week, which gives you, you know, a week to work on your block and then have your, your next block the next week. But don't feel pressured. If you are, you know, your time is consumed with other things or other projects, you can take your time on this. You don't even have to start it at the same time that we're starting it. You can start it later and catch up. You could even do it all alone later on this fall when you have more time. I know a lot of people, as spring is coming, they're going to be outside and enjoying uh, different other things, uh, vacation, so forth. So don't feel pressured. You could even start now and finish later. It's all good. Whatever your time, uh, it works best for. So let's go ahead and get started on block two. Now I'm gonna adjust my camera a little bit, so just give me a moment here. I wanna make sure that you can see everything that's going on. Sorry for the wiggle, I'm the only camera person in the house, so I have to do everything by myself. Okay. Don't worry about my notes. My notes are just so that as I uh, get these patterns ready for you that everything is working cohesively and also um, I use it at my cutting table. So today we're working on block two which is the shoe fly block. Very easy to do. It's a pretty quick block. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still working either. I'm not sure if it's my cold or if it's allergies but anyways I'm still feeling a little froggy here. Um, as I'm filming these for you. So let's get started. I'm really excited about, oh, before I forget, we have um, two white that are four and a half by four and a half. I'm just gonna make my note here. Sometimes putting this into my software, it spits out a size that isn't working well. And so I adjust my size before it goes out to you. So we have two white that's four and a half by four and a half and two of whatever color you're using within your block, whatever colors that you have decided and where they're gonna go. So I'm using two of those at four and a half by four and a half. Those are gonna go together to make our half square triangles for each corner. Then I'm using um, my white, which is my background. Now you may be using black or another um, color. That's totally fine. These are cut, um, I have four of them, three seven eights by three seven eights. And then I have my center, which is this coloring. So that will be my center here. And that's three seven eights by three seven eights. And you only need one of those, of course. <clears throat> now I've given everyone a color chart to go by. Um, it's all colored in purple. In our group, uh, Seaside Quilting on Facebook, I've also um, posted different colorings of it. Some use six colors, some use seven, uh, five colors, some use six. Um, you can adjust your colors. I even put a coloring sheet up 
So if you would like to sit and follow the diagram and color it in with your own coloring to see how you want it to go together, um, that, that might be helpful. Some people like to do that, so I've made it available. We are working with a scant quarter inch while we're doing this quilt, so don't forget to set your machine back to your stitches at 2.0. I like the smaller stitches. They work well um, over time, holding the quilt up together. My quilts get highly used. They're on, they're on my couch and my chairs. They're everywhere in my house. So um, I like to use the smaller stitches because they're gonna get washed quite often. Also, my needle is set to a scant quarter inch. If you're not familiar with scant quarter inch, once again, go back and uh, go through the playlist, our tips area, and there is a vid tutorial on the scant quarter inch. Now I am using Batik's, but I'm using another brand of fabric. I don't remember the brand. Um, it does have, it's, it's a tonal, um, white so it has uh, different tones of white on here almost like a grunge look and so I have to when I use a different fabric with my batiks I just starch it a couple times when I'm pressing my fabric before cutting so it stiffens up to the same as a batik there's not a problem with using other fabrics with batiks they wash well together they do well together um, some people think that you can only use batiks with batiks. That's not true. I've never had a problem with them. I've never even had a problem with my batiks running. Um, and I've used many different colors, uh, dark, light, everything, because these get washed over like 10 times, I believe, if I recall. And to get all the wax and stuff out that's used to create a batik. So uh, those dyes come out and come out and come out. Now, if you do um, happen to get a batik, and it depends on the company, these are uh, really good companies that we pick out the batiks from. Um, some you might see some color dye splotches and whatnot. You can wash those fabrics ahead of time, but the majority of the time you don't need to wash your batiks ahead of time. So there's that. Let's go ahead and get started on this. We're going to make sure that we take the right side of one of our fabrics and put right side to right side, line them up together. And we're going to make a line down through the center. I might as well line both of these up since I gotta do both of them. There we go. <clears throat> and we're going to make a line diagonally from one corner to the next corner. That's eventually going to be our cut line, of course. Now I have um, on my machine, I use a quarter inch foot that has a guide, a little metal guide on the side. I actually use that guide to go down the center line. And then it does my scant quarter inch on each side of my line. If you're not doing it like I am doing it, you make your center line. And that didn't quite come out dark as I would like it. Probably gonna need some new pens soon. I use these a lot. Um, so I'm going to make a quarter inch line on each side. Just find your quarter inch guide. I use creative grid rulers. I really like them because they have the little spots where you that are grippy on the bottom. So I don't need to put grips onto my rulers so it doesn't slide when I'm marking or cutting. And they have um, a quarter inch mark right on the edge, a guideline. So I'm going to line that up with that line and I will make my line on the other side. Now, I typically don't have to do this myself because I use my guide on my foot to go down that, to guide me down that center line. But I'm doing this for you in case you don't have that, that you can see. 
what it looks like. Okay. Get that out of my way. Oh, I need to mark my other one. <laughs> I am a goof sometimes. <clears throat> you know, when you're just sitting and quilting, your mind is just concentrated on that. But when you're on film, your mind is concentrated on so many other things. Okay. And I'm only going to do my center line on that because that's all that I need for me. So as you can see, you have your center line and then your quarter inch line on each side. You're going to be sewing on the side lines, on the quarter inch lines. The center line will be our cut line afterward. And I'm just gonna chain piece these. And I like to hold on to my fabric on both sides so I can keep a nice straight steady line as I'm sewing. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not, if I can get this close enough for you to see, but I have that little guide on the edge and it's following right along my center line for me. Okay, so now we're gonna do our other line on the other side. Okay, so both of those are done. I'm not sure how well you can see this on your can on the camera, but I used my guide foot going down the center and it did stay on those lines that I drew for my stitching. So now we're gonna cut these in half and we're gonna cut right on that center line. You can use scissors if you want or you can use your rotary cutter, whichever your preference is. And I do use a 50 weight thread in my top and my bobbin. Okay. So let's move this aside. I'm gonna pull over my pressing mat here. I've got so many things on my desk. Ah. There we go. So I'm gonna press my seams toward the dark side where I'm using the white. I'm just going to set my seam, or stitches rather, and then I just open it up and I take my fingernails and I run them underneath. Now, if you don't want to mess up your little pretty fingernails, mine don't get to be pretty very often because this time of the year I start working outside, so even if I painted them, they would end up all messed up. You can use the little purple thing, or um, they have different wooden ones uh, that you can use. And I just make sure that my seam is completely open. I don't want 
the fabric over here to be rolled over onto this fabric at all. I want a nice, clean, open seam so my measurements will be really well. And then I'm going to press that. Remember, don't iron, don't go back and forth. You don't wanna mess up your fabric, stretch it out. And then I put my quilter's clapper on for a second to flatten my seam. And let's do the rest of these. So I don't know where you are in the world watching. Here in uh, Northern Virginia, it's pretty nice weather this week. Actually, we've had really nice weather all through the winter and for the spring. The only thing I can complain about is that we have an early allergy season. <laughs> Our trees have been budding early this year and that's causing more allergens to be in the air. Sorry for the background noise if you're hearing that. Somebody's out there cutting even during the week. It never fails. I start filming something and somebody starts making some noise outside of my area. Okay, so now we have those all ready. Now we're going to square them up. Uh, get that out of my way. And I'm just going to be using my ruler to square things up. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so on my ruler, let me get a paper. The Creative Grids rulers are really nice. They have a 45 degree line down this end and they have two 45 degree lines on this end. One here that's white for darker fabrics and one here that's black for lighter fabrics. It also has a 30 degree um, line on here. We're not gonna use that. We wanna use the 45 and that's what we're gonna use to square up our fabric. And the other thing that I like is that you can square, so if you're using the black line, you'll use your numbers over here to square up. And if you're using the white line, then you use your, your marks down here. Okay. So I'm gonna take my 45 degree line and I'm going to place it on that center seam. And I'm just gonna ease it down because I'm wanting this to come out to three and seven eighths. Now we cut them at four and a half inches. Now we need to square it up to three and seven eighths. And we're only gonna be taking off just a little bit of fabric on the side. And I, have these being cut out just a little bit larger so you have plenty of room to get them to the three and seven eighths easily. And we're just taking off little pieces, little pieces off the sides. Okay, so I've done that side. I'm going to flip this around and I have a cat crying at my back door. So now, I really want to check my measurements that I'm straight on that line and my edges are sitting perfectly on the three and seven eighths. And remember, the little marks between are your eighths. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After the three, that's my three and seven eighths. 
I double check to make sure that I'm sitting perfectly in the center, that all my edge is on that three and seven eighths on both sides, and then I make my cut. And as you can see, we just took off a little tiny bit of fabric. And now we have a nice three and seven eighths, which is going to match up with our other three and seven eighths pieces that we cut out. And that's what we're looking for. <clears throat> oh, she went away. <laughs> She'll be back in a few minutes crying again to come in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to square each of these up. And this only takes a couple of minutes. But you do want to make sure that you double check your measurement and that you're sitting right on that three and seven eighths even and that you're evenly on that center line with your 45 degree mark. And this gets rid of your dog ears at the same time. Now, usually I'm down here playing my music, making my blocks. Enjoying my day. I don't know if you like to watch movies while you're sewing. Sometimes I do. I'll put on old movies that I've seen a billion times so I can stay concentrated on my quilt, but I know what's going on while I'm listening to the movie in the background. But other days I play music while I'm down here. Okay, let's grab that last one. And we're almost done with our half square triangles. <clears throat> now remember, these videos will stay on YouTube for you to, to uh, Rewatch, download. Some people have the the membership so they can download the the videos and keep them on their computer or phone or whatever. Okay, just checking my markings. Don't want to make a mistake and have to do it over. We had that happen on block one. <laughs> well, I didn't have to do the whole block over, but I did have to take a section apart because I was uh, not paying attention. And it is harder to pay attention when you're talking to people. Okay, so I'm going to move this out of my way. I keep my guide there so I see where everything goes. And now we can put our blocks together. We have all of our pieces ready. So this is our center. I have to check this fabric because there is a back side and a front side. I need something to lay it on so I can tell which is the right side and which is the back side. And I can barely tell. Darn. Okay, I believe those are the right sides. This is the only one that I have to worry about, which is my right side. So I like to double check ahead of time because I have had times where I've sewn them thinking I was on the right side and I wasn't. 
I love using tonal um, creams and whites. They look really pretty. <clears throat> so you get that solid effect, but you also have some pattern within it. And so then each one of our corners is going to go in like this. Just like that. And that looks just like our picture. Let me scoot this over just a little bit. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to sew our three rows together using a scant quarter inch, remember. So you're gonna sew these three pieces together, these three pieces together, and these three pieces together. And then we'll sew our rows together. So go ahead and sew you're just going to flip this over right side to right side. Sew your line. Then you'll flip this side over to that side. Do your quarter, your scant quarter inch there. Open these up and press them. So go ahead and do that part, and then we'll sew our we'll sew each of our rows together. Okay, so now we have our three rows sewn together. <clears throat> these three pieces, these three pieces, and these. When you're pressing your seams, you're going to want your top seams to be facing the left between each piece, in the middle, towards the right, and your bottom piece, again, towards the left. This makes it easier, so when we go to put our rows together, so I'm just going to take my center row and I'm going to flip it up, right side to right side, and then I'm going to be making sure that I get these seams together nice and lined up. Now, if you just press them up against each other, you can see that they, they almost like interlock into each other. So I'm going to put a pin and make sure that my pin goes straight down through the fabric. And then I double check to make sure, even opening it up to make sure that my pin is sitting right at the edge of each of the seams, which will keep them locked together. And sometimes you can just wiggle them with your fingers and you can feel them locked against each other. If not, then just, you know, adjust the fabric so that they are. And then once again, putting my pin straight down through, I double check because sometimes it goes a little off to the side. Now it's not much off to the side, just maybe a millimeter if that. It's just a little off to the side. I can, I'll can i be able to see my pinhole when I pull my pin out and I'm gonna move it right next to it so I'm up against that seam and make sure that my pin goes straight down through. And now I know that they're going to stay together when I go to sew. Now I will clip or pin the end so it stays lined up and doesn't shift as I'm coming down, sewing down through. And I even like to put a clip on the bottom. So it's keeping my fabrics lined up. So it will look like this. And I like this little bottom one because as I come towards the end, my fabrics aren't shifting and I know that they're gonna stay nicely lined up. Okay. So let's sew that row together. And you want to be making sure that you're holding and guiding your fabric through on the left side of it. Because we want a nice straight line when we do our seams. If our, if our sewing is, you know, wiggly, then our seam doesn't press straight. 
and they won't line up perfectly and be the right size. Now, as I sew, I'm gonna come really close to that pin so that my needle is holding those sections together, but I don't want to sew on my pin and break my needle because that's never good for your sewing machine. So I just slow down and I watch my needle and when I'm almost to that pin, but I know that my needle is like right in this edge, right here before that stitching, I know that it's holding both those pieces together for me. I can slide my pin out and set it to the side and continue sewing to the next pin. And once again, when I get close to that pin, I'm gonna slow down Watch my needle and then ease it out and continue sewing to the end. So that's our top and our middle that we've sewn together now. And I don't want too many seams coming upward. So I'm going to press this, just finger press a little bit. And I'll double check on this side to make sure nothing's folding over onto each other, that the seam's nice and open. And I finger press it first. So I'm going to have my seam going towards the middle for this so I don't end up with bulky seams. And I'm just going to press as I go along. And see if I had a 12 inch quilters clapper, this would go across my whole piece for me, but I don't. So I just move my small one along and do a couple presses. So it's be nice and flat for me. So now I'm gonna take my bottom piece and I'm gonna flip that up so right sides are together and then we'll pin this one. And it's the same thing. We're gonna match up our seams to each other. Making sure that our edges line up. Sometimes, you know, now there's a little bit of weight behind or in front rather. So I'm gonna put a clip here temporarily just to make sure that these are lined up. <clears throat> and I even put a clip down here. So when I take that one out, this side is staying lined up. Okay. Because you don't want your back fabric to be up higher than your front fabric. You want a nice straight line up. Make sure my pin's in there straight. Now I'll put a clip on this end. And then I'm gonna put one down here to keep it from, you know, the, the bottom of this from shifting while I'm sewing. And I used to not, I used to be a rebel. I used to be like, oh, you don't need pins. I can sew straight, blah, blah, blah. Well, I learned over the years that if I want my pieces to come out measuring accurately and fit together well, I have to stop being that rebel. Okay. 
So now it looks like this. I have it pinned and clipped. Probably a little too close. On each side, I'll take this clip out. And I just make sure my corner is lined up well before I start sewing. Once again, when I get close to that pin, I just press it down so that the pin's gonna go underneath my guide on this side. And I'm gonna sew until I'm close to the pin, but not on it. just lost one of my pins. I'll find it later. Oh, there it is. Okay, and there's our pretty block. All nice and neat. And I'm going to press my seam up with my fingers and then I'll press it on my mat okay so now we're ready for our border or sashing, rather. So it's going to be the same, the same thing that we did for block one. Oh, I need my diagram. So this week, our sashing is going to be more on this side and the bottom. And our block is going to be up here in the corner. So, scoop that out of my way. So my block's going to go more up here. Get some stuff out. Move the camera over so you can see. So the block's going to go more up in the corner like that. We're going to have a sashing piece here. And you, you can download the cutting chart for these. I went over the sizes in the um, block one tutorial. I'm not going to go over the sizes of the sashing each time. And we're missing. And then we have our long piece. So you'll sew these three together. And they will look like this. This will get sewn to your block. Once you sew this to your block, you will sew this to the bottom. Remember, you have a quarter of an inch difference on each one. So I just kind of scoot that over so this fits on the bottom. So you sew these two together, your, your three pieces first. Then these two get sewn together. Then you will add this sashing here. And then you will have your sashing there your smaller piece and your smaller piece. These three, 
running out of room. It ends up being a 16 and a half by 16 and a half unfinished block. So your small piece will go here, then your small piece. So you'll sew those together and then you'll sew them to this piece going across and press them. So it ends up being like this. So this is our three rows that we're sewing together. Try to get this camera angled a little better so you can see. Okay, so we have our three sections now. You've sewn these together. You've sewn them to your block. You have your middle piece. And then you have your last row down here where we sewed our small pieces together, then sewed them to this piece. Now you will sew this to that and this to that. And that will be our finished block for this week. So there you go. Now I'm not sewing my, my blocks to each other yet. We did block one. This is block two. Next week we will do block three. And once we have three blocks, then we can sew those three together. So each of our blocks consists of, remember, a 10 and a half unfinished central focus block. Then we have our sashings that we add on. These sashings, once they're added on, make this a 16 and a half by 16 and a half unfinished block. So once we have three that we can put together to create our first row, then I'll sew them together so that you can see how the first row will go together. So that's it for this week. Please join us on Facebook in our group, Seaside Quilting. Um, we also have our business page, Seaside Quilting Supplies, um, LLC on Facebook where we post our fabric sales, um, our lives. Our lives are every Tuesday, sip and shop at 7 p.m. Eastern time. If this is the first time that you're watching us, please subscribe. We have many tutorials and we're adding more and more all the time uh, to our YouTube channel. And right next to where you subscribe, there's a little bell. If you click on that bell, you can change your notifications. If you change it to all, next week when the next block comes out, you'll get a notification or if any other tutorials get added. In the meantime, um, those will get added. Uh, you'll get a little notification. So that's it for this week. I'll see you next Friday for block three. In the meantime, I wish you happy sewing.